of the notorious bandit terrorizing the northwest Kachala Soji has let loose its gang on several villages in Shikanfi local government area of Zamfara State, furious that his father was arrested by security agents. At least, at the last count yesterday, the gang had abducted up to 150 villagers and travelers. In neighboring Kaduna State, the Atiap Community Development Association alleged that 42 of its people were killed and seven wounded by suspected headers in the last attacks in several communities in Zangon, Katsaf local government area. 338 houses were also allegedly set ablaze. Toji, who met with renowned Islamic cleric Sheikh Ahmad Gumi in February, demanded his father's immediate release to enable him to celebrate Eid Kabul with his family. He reportedly vowed to abduct as many people as possible and keep them away from observing the Eid with their families if his own father was not released. He wonder why the old man was arrested in the first instance. The gang has laid siege to such villages as Kuya, Keta, Kware, Badarawe, Marisua and Mabereya. Several travelers have also been abducted in Guswa, Sukutu Road. Residents of neighboring villages are already in fear of what may befall them from the bandits. During the February meeting with Gumi in Makai Forest, Toji had said neither him nor his men were afraid of death. He accused governments of underrating and uh, reneging on the promises made to him and other bandits. This is how Boko Haram started. Nigeria underestimated us and the problem, he told Gumi. He said his gang and in its possessions loads of arms it could use to paralyze the state. His gang had in its possessions loads of arms, but uh, DSS will not know that one. See somebody that is saying that he has what it takes to cripple the uh, uh, country. Buari will not hear that to Malami. The rest of them, they will not hear. DSS will not get that intelligence report. They won't get it. They cannot go there. But once they see the once see armless people, they will just that's that's when they will be flexing their muscles. See somebody who is boasting. He has it. He has all what it takes. But they won't go there. Abakiari that is jumping from one place to another, making himself feel good, will not go to all those places. Will not. Counting the losses of his people at a press conference in Kaduna, the Atiap Community Development Association said 42 of their kinsmen were killed, seven wounded, and 338 houses set ablaze in the latest attacks in several communities in Zangong, Katav, local government area. A lot of them have been boasting here and there. They have Juju, they have that, they have that. They still kill soldiers. They will still tell you, but they will never be arrested. And some people come and be talking, telling us about Nam they cannot, telling us about a Sunday boo. Oh, he shouldn't have done it that way. But they don't have the 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 the, the liver to condemn the activities of these people. Eight cars, thirteen motorcycles, generators, food and domestic items were also either looted or raised in what the association labored. And onslaughts again at Yap Chiefdom. President of the Association Samuel T. Ache asked the Kaduna state government to be alive to its responsibility by putting an immediate end to the condemnable killings. The culprits, Ache added, should be fished out and brought to justice. He recalled that not too long ago, the Fulani and Atiap communities signed a peace pact which both sides tried to respect. You wonder where the provocation that sparked the latest violence came from. He said, in all the attacks in the 12 different villages as of July 15, 2021, a total of 42 people were killed and 338 houses burnt with 7 people wounded. Other valuables were not left out as 8 cars, 13 motorcycles, generators, food and domestic items were either looted or consumed by fire. Our revered 
places of worship were not spared as seven churches and their pastorium were raised among the houses raised by the militia at the families family compound of our paramount ruler his royal highness sir dominic yaya in magamiya and also the abuyab family compound of retired major general shikari billy york a former commandant of the nigeria african peacekeeping arm the entire atiab nation seems to be at a loss as as to these senseless killings by the fulani militia as we have bent over to implement the decisions of the peace accord reached with the parties involved the question is what else were we supposed to do that was not done it seems apparent that these attackers are being sponsored with larger motives that meet the eyes continuing he said it is a well-known fact that the world that crises are not won on the battlefield but at the round table through discussions that could lead to amicable resolution of the crisis with the parties determined to bring an end to it the commander-in-chief of the federal republic of nigeria once said that anybody found in possession of deadly arms should be shot on sight but as i am talking to you full army militia still graze in atia land with ak-47 hung on their shoulders there is no peace in all the areas attacked that has a distance of more than 10 to 15 minutes drive from one security checkpoint to another. It is not only lives and houses that were destroyed, but crops and, pla and places of worship inclusive. Our people are known to be purely peasant farmers, but as this season of farming have to abandon their farms and here, and for fear of being killed, all schools in the area are closed down. Hence, our children can no longer go to school, thereby creating a humanitarian crisis for all the displaced people in the land, which in turn creates an urgent need for internally displaced persons, comes to cater for those that have been left at the mercy of the weather, both in rain and sunshine, without any roof on their heads since the renewed uh, persistent attacks this whole thing looks like the fulani militias want to grab and occupy our land the atia people are law-abiding citizens who have been loyal to all successive governments to date and wonder why we should be left alone to carry our cross now based on this we ask that government provide more troops humanitarian relief materials and a peaceful atmosphere for all Else, we will be left with no option than to protect ourselves using all legal means. <laughs> I think uh, that was the time. You know what struck me in this whole thing? There was a time, there was a, they they had a meeting between the Fulani and the so-called Atia, a, a peace meeting that they uh, know everybody, uh, we there will be peace. I think that was last year. That there will be peace, so that. All these uh, Fulani who are doing all these things should just stop. And they all agreed. Even their people agreed. And a lot of people said, don't be deceived. That don't be deceived with all these things. They don't be deceived. They are not serious about it. Don't be deceived. But see what is happening now. So we're calling on government now. So the government does not know. Talking about AK-47. Like I said, the DSS will not see all these things. They are doing all these things over and over again. You know the worst part of it now? They are telling us that, uh, or telling the media houses not to report the activities of uh, all these bandits and Boko Haram and the rest of them. Can you imagine such a thing? You see, imagine? So, people want these people that, this peace that you are trying to make with these people, they don't mean it. They are just deceiving you. But just like he said, that what could have warranted this whole thing in the first place? So, guys, let's say your opinion and have your take.